on my computer. And now I'm going to introduce our guests for tonight. Um, Tracy and Vance Marino, in a very short time, we have become really good friends. Well, I met them at the Durango um, uh, Songwriter Expo out in February and just immediately recognized talent when I saw one. These two are the San Diego coordinators of the NSAI group out there. And they have cracked the code when it comes to getting their songs placed in TV and film. And they wrote a book called, Hey, That's My Song. <laughs> and, um, and they're just lovely. They know the beginning, middle, and end of what it takes. It took them five years to get their first sync, but then, then, you know, they got many more after that. Right, Tracy and Vance? You so it. it's very exciting to have you here, and I really appreciate it. Um, so let's see. Does this sound good? Um, so let me see. So as we were talking about this, um, we'd really like to know the kinds of songs that music, music supervisors really need. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your world as a songwriter versus their world as a, as a music supervisor. <laughs> Tell us, a, give us a little bit of your view on uh, on this. Well, the reason I asked the question, who are songwriters versus lyricists versus composers versus producers, is because it's so important to know what you do and what you do well before you start writing for sync. We were songwriters and I would go to Nashville and all my songwriting meetings, I would go up to LA and I was writing these songs and, and they just weren't getting cut. They weren't hit songs and I was so frustrated. And it wasn't until years later, I discovered a secret and I didn't even know about myself. I was writing sync songs the whole entire time. And I found out there's a huge difference between writing songs for hits and artist cuts and versus sync. So what is sync? Let's define sync. So Vance will tell you. <laughs> uh, sync, S-Y-N-C, not, not the other sync. Um, so not the kitchen sink. Not the no, kitchen not sink. Not the kitchen sink. That's, that's a different, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, synchronization, as in synchronizing audio, a uh, song, with video. That's, that's what it's about. And so, um, yeah, so getting back to what Tracy was saying about, uh, about um, what our intentions were. Tr Tracy's intentions were not to write for sync and she was accidentally writing for sync. Um, that, and, and that is actually, that, that's a big part of our world versus their world because we as songwriters and artists, we just wanna write whatever we wanna write. And if we're lucky, like Tracy was, uh, then uh, the songs we write may actually work for sync. But most of, the, of us that do it intentionally do it uh, on purpose. We're trying to, we, we know we're, we're what we call reverse engineering. We're, we're imagining <laughs> a TV show, a scene in that TV show, or, or ideally a scene that occurs in a bunch of different TV shows, the breakup scene, the, 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 the getting revenge scene, the, um, oh, I'm lost. I don't know what I'm going to do next with my life scene. Those, the, and, and many others, we know those scenes show up a lot. So write about those scenes. Don't write about, um, what color dress someone was wearing or how fast the car was going. Write about what people in the scenes are feeling. That is the purpose of songs and even just instrumental music. Instrumental music and songs with lyrics is to underscore the feelings that, that people on screen are feeling. And well, sorry, Nancy, regarding music supervisors, there are certain themes that they always need, okay, a music supervisor is the person in charge of a project, usually film or TV show, and it's a huge undertaking, it's a big responsibility. They have to clear all this music, and you'll hear this terminology, clearance, and that really means that they have to know who wrote the song, who recorded the song, who played on the song, is the song completely unattached, is it through a publisher? You know, they have to find out all this stuff and it can be very tedious, but they also have to find out songs that go with themes that fit the scene. Some songs are too busy and the scene is very quiet and intimate and other songs are too 
um, out of tune maybe the singer or it's, they have a female singing but they really want a male singing so there are all these particulars and as Nancy mentioned a brief that is an explanation of what is needed in a show and the music supervisors will send out briefs mostly to publishing companies to labels to sync agencies to production music libraries and we'll explain all that if we have time but <laughs> it's also in our book because they're very different entities they have very different deals but they all are trying to get into these projects so that's the world of the music supervisor and there are probably about 20 themes that are constantly asked for in briefs such as happiness or um, defeated and feeling down and really depressed or really exuberant happy victorious you know there are all these specific themes and when you write about those in a way that it can be used in multiple projects that's when you really crack the code in sync mm -hmm. and the, a good way to do that is to watch tv shows and listen to tv shows especially when there's a song being played or if uh, maybe it's instrumental music maybe it's a song pay attention to how they're making whoever created that music how they're making you feel that way and 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 uh you know, the instrumentation they're using where in the uh in the story is this piece of music being used to, to um, heighten the emotion in the scene. Right, the music is often said it's another character. So it's also a character feeling the feelings. And we know as songwriters, we can, I don't like the word manipulate, sometimes you'll hear that, but you can move- Influence. Uh, influence or move someone to tears or to laughter just from how you're approaching your song. So that's the secret to writing for sync is understanding how to write feelings. Um, it's almost like your song, if you could put one emoji on your song, what would it be? <laughs> and as kind of a joke, we put emojis throughout our book and that kind of the liked it, so they kept it and we had a, an artist do little emojis. But that's the point is that your song in two seconds, four seconds, no more than 10 seconds has to evoke that emoji. So just think of that when you're writing your song. And emojis like a little character. It's like a little happy face. You know, you've all seen them on your phone and things like that. But that's the simplest way to do it. If it's going neutral face or a happy face or really sad face, your song should have an emoji right on it. <laughs> I love that. Well, like, what can you do to improve your odds uh, that a music supervisor is going to like your song? It's not a matter of them liking your song. Yes, that's a part of it, but that's the main thing. The main thing uh, that a music supervisor is looking for is how well does this piece of music fit with yeah. the theme? Uh, uh, it, there may be a, a, a superior piece of music because it has all these wonderful uh, arrangement ideas and, and uh, composition concepts applied to it. But if it doesn't uh, have the appropriate emotion to fit the scene, the music supervisor, it doesn't matter if the music supervisor likes it or not. They like um, music that fits the scenes in their projects. And, and, and they do that, as we said, by um, having the emotion that the scene needs, but also having the, 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 the genre, which is not really getting into production and arrangement, but, but the genre needs to fit um, the, the show or a series. There are some TV shows, you know, the CW dramas, uh, Riverdale, uh, Batwoman, that have, you know, very contemporary hits, that type of vibe. Um, back in the days of the TV show Nashville, they, they had country songs. Um, and then there are some uh, shows that use hip hop. Um, so that's another thing to take into consideration, uh, in addition to writing your lyrics that talk about emotion, is um, the genre of your song. Cool. You know, I know I, I spend a lot of time watching TV, and I'm always like, you know, which one of these shows would my music fit in, right? I like, I'm not Stranger Things, right? <laughs> okay, but I'm more Virgin River, right? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So can you guys give us some examples of songs? Remember, uh, we talked about this a little bit. Do you have some song examples that you can share with us and talk yes, us sure. through it? Yeah, we can share a screen. We have some examples of songs we've had placed over and over uh, to give you an idea of the differences. Now, one of the biggest clues that we learned a long time ago when we were starting out, we were overwriting. And we got very insulted by that because we took a long time to craft lyrics 
We love lyric writing, but it just would take us literally weeks to write a song, maybe months even. And, and we'd write several concurrently, but it just took so long. And finally, this one publisher, he does music for a lot of shows in New York and kind of like serious shows. And um, he was doing kind of the news investigative uh, shows. And he said, you guys are overwriting. You're writing too much. There are too many words. There are too many parts. And we discovered that it's kind of a two-part thing. It's usually verse and chorus, and maybe a post-chorus. But the lyrics can be two, three, four lines. So here are some examples of some songs. We, we took that to heart, and it was life-changing. Just mm -hmm. simple, simple, simple. And you should know what the song is about in literally 10 seconds. You should know if it's sad, and the title is a big giveaway so here here's one of our biggest songs that gets placed all the time in all different shows and see if you know why okay and everybody please make sure you mute yourself um okay so this is called kiss goodbye this was used in uh, a show called southern charm and this is a song that tracy and i wrote with uh, an artist named sierra west idea of what's happening there it's a it's it got a typical uh structure uh verse chorus um this interlude oo oh, oh part that's actually a good thing to have nonsense lyrics ooh whoa um la, it, la, 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 la. yeah it it it, uh, it gives them uh, a vocal uh snippet to use with without having to worry about lyrics that get in the way of dialogue they'll either use an instrumental part of the song uh, for the, uh, under the dialogue, or sometimes they actually use the lyrics under the dialogue, but this gives them another choice when there's an oh, whoa, something like that. And um, this is kind of an aside, but it's important. Um, you may have noticed uh, we're focusing on the song itself because we're songwriters, but we were talking about production earlier because that's very important too. You'll notice it starts off just a guitar, then a piano comes in, then there's an organ, and right where we turned it off, that's where the drums come in. So there are different levels, there are different layers. It doesn't suddenly change. There are no changes in key, no changes in tempo. But, but in production and, and the number of instruments. This particular one does not have a, a background vocals or harmonies. In other cases, we do add those on, 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 on later choruses. Yeah, and it's, um, so did anyone not get what this song is about? It's kind of generic, really. It's universal. It's about just wish, you know saying goodbye to someone. Now, the reason this works well in different shows is because you don't know who it's saying goodbye to. Is it a, a parent? Is it to a child? Are they going to school for the first day in kindergarten? Is it to a, uh, someone who's dying? Is it a, um, a lover that's leaving? And it's been used in all those kinds of scenes because none of the lyrics really explain exactly what's going on. It's just telling about the emotion. Yeah, notice, I mean, honestly, looking at these lyrics, notice what's uh, there and notice what's not there. Take a breath, dry your tears, think of me and I'll be here. It's not talking about, um, you know, uh, what I'm wearing or or the kind um, of day it is. It doesn't even say who you is. Is you a, a family member, a pet, 
a lover. We don't know who you is because it doesn't matter. That is another thing uh, talking about increasing your odds. An earlier question that Nancy asked is don't be specific. The less specific you can be about details, the higher the likelihood your song is going to get placed. Um, this song has an emotion to it. Um, certainly the vocalist, um, we love working with Sierra. This is, this is her wheelhouse, it's these heartbreak types of songs. This song was used in an episode of Southern Charm when a guy broke up with his girlfriend that they just had a baby with. Um, she just had a baby uh, with him and he dumped her over text. <laughs> and they played this song. <laughs> really cruel. Cool. Typically, it's like 20, 30 seconds. This ran for like two minutes, so it actually paid very well. And but. they also chopped it up. I think they um, they started out with a different line, and then they chopped out some parts of the verse and just had like an instrumental going and looped that. Loop means they took it and used those same two or four bars over and over again and, and while they're talking. And then they came back with the chorus and then it came out again and just had instrumental. So they're going to chop up your baby. And if you can't handle that, don't do sync because they do it all the time. And it's going to be shocking when you first hear it going, wait a minute, I worked so hard. And sometimes they don't even ever use a verse that you work so hard and has the best lines. Sometimes they don't even use any of the lyrics. They'll mm -hmm. use the instrumental or the bed. And a bed means no vocals, no background vocals, no main vocals, just the bed. And it just has like a guitar going for over and over till you think you're going to go crazy. They do that. Which is something to consider, especially for those of you who are not producers and you're having somebody else produce your songs for you. Obviously, they're going to deliver to you a finished product with, with all the instruments, all the vocals. If, you're, if you have any intention, even if you don't, uh, I, I would, we would recommend um, having them deliver a mix with no vocals, just instruments. Yeah. So you should walk away with the full mix and then the second one should be the, the no vocal mix. So then at least you, are, um, you have what you need. Uh, because I, I know that for some music supervisors, uh, once they say, hey, I'm interested in your song, do you have a mix with no vocals? And if the answer is no, you just decreased your odds. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really important now. And if you are using a demo studio, which is common in Nashville, we were certainly doing that when we were doing song demos. Now they're savvy to sync and you have to either pay a little bit more, most of the time you do, um, and make sure about the musician's union. If a singer and the band, a lot of them are, and they're entitled to um, back-end royalties and, and things like that, if you don't get the releases, you everyone's in a big lot of trouble. So be sure before you record for sync and you can't do it yourself, ask the producer in the studio, ask all the musicians, and most of the time, about half of them, I would say, are okay with that, but they may charge you for a TV version, which means it's all cleared and mm -hmm. that they'll provide um, all the additional mixes as Vance was talking about. That means that a mix just means the song is all done and it's very polished. The mix, they've taken out all any cracks or vocal pops or the, the guitars are all tuned, the vocals are all tuned, and then it's uh, mastered, which means they even do it a little bit more. It's pristine, it's beautiful doesn't have to be quite record quality it has to be broadcast quality and the only difference is you can do record quality but the the tech gets a little um advanced shall we say you need different uh recording to start recording in different specs so be sure to uh consult with the producer and the engineer working on your song to make sure they have the correct specs because sync is a little different than using a hit song in a okay, okay, do you mean by specs, do you mean like 44K versus 48K? Right. Um, right. 48K has become more the standard and yet in the CD world, remember those? CDs, CDs were 44K, 16-bit. Um, right. In the film TV world, it's it's more 48K. We've never been asked for 92, but uh, or 96 rather. Yeah, I've been asked higher. for 96. But 48 is pretty standard. Um, 16 bits usually okay. We record in 24 bit, um, but because you can always um, convert it down. But basically, what we recommend is record at the highest resolution that your hardware and software will allow. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't. You can always go down um, when you make versions of it, like MP3s. Mm -hmm. You've heard of those, um, and it's really important to get that first because if it's not recorded that way, it probably won't be used in sync. So everyone has to be on board with it, and you also have to have signed work for hires and releases from everybody if you're using an outside studio just to know because a lot of people don't know this and they pitch their wonderful song they think wow this came out great oh it's perfect for the jukebox scene in a hallmark movie and then it doesn't get used and it's heartbreaking for everybody yeah. and you pay a lot for those demos you pay a thousand dollars sometimes let's do another song uh, hold on a second i got one one really important question from okay. frank vadejo um and you know like this topic comes up all the time. Is it true that some music supervisors do not take songs that use samples from Splice? You know, so talk to us a little bit about samples and do you know about Splice and who are who they are? And we sure do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hot button topic. And we'll just say that be very careful when you buy loops they're called loops you don't buy them you don't buy you them. Rent you them you rent you them. them yes but people think they're buying them and they put them in their songs and then everyone gets in trouble there again no one knows who really recorded the song and so the music supervisor has to find who produced the song who made these loops who created these beautiful um, sounds and they can't or they do and then the person comes back and says hey it was used in uh, a major you know, feature film, I want my $10,000. And that's been happening lately. So be very careful. They're called online loops, producers loops. Is royalty right? free. Is it oh, royalty? That's, 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 a, that's a category of a music library. I guess they have loops too, but um, well, let's go back to the question, uh, to answer the question. Yes, some music supervisors, I'm going to say most supervisors, uh, we're in a, uh, a private Facebook group with music supervisors, even though we're not, but it's just fascinating. They let us in. <laughs> it's fat, we snuck in. Uh, it's fascinating to, to see and hear the things that they talk about. They're not talking about, hey, can I find, uh, I need to find a song that sounds like this. They're talking about, how, how can I clear this? Who, who has the last 20% of publishing on this song? It's uh, BMI and ASCAP have the wrong information. They're trying to clear things. So that's what music supervisors do. They don't just sit around listening to making playlists and list, trying to find their favorite songs. They're looking for music that fits their, their projects and then once they do that, they need to clear it. They need approval from, there are two copyrights involved. They need approval from the people who wrote the song and have the publishing on the song. And then the second copyright is the recording, uh, which re obviously refers to who, who owns the recording and who performed on the recording. So everybody involved has to uh, sign off and say, yes, this piece of music can be used in that TV show. The problem with the sample loop is we don't really know who that person was. Uh, it, it was purchased or, or, or rented on, on one of those um, uh, online beat renting sites. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and sometimes the, the, the producer, this is the way these, most of these sites work. There's this website and there are producers who create these loops and samples and they make them available through the website to the music users, producers. And so at any time, and this has happened, where the, the, the producer who supplied the beat gets bought out. And then all the people that legitimately bought that and rented that loop, rather, their uh, their their deals are null and void. Yeah. So, Things can change. Or, or some, and there's some cases where the creator retains their ownership, but then according to Splice or Beat Stars or whoever it is, the, the the beat maker is now entitled to some of the songwriting credit on the song mm -hmm. and can therefore say yay or nay on, on a placement. <laughs> so it is complicated. It's now, samples crazy. that are in a virtual instrument and in a plugin, those typically have a, a, an end user license agreement that says you own it, we, 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 we have nothing to do with it. It's the ones online yeah, that are the issue. There are very legitimate ones. There are companies called um, Spectrosonics. They have a, a package called Omnisphere. If you don't have it, it's fantastic. If you like recording yourself, they have all different kinds of sounds and they're beautiful and you can tweak them and everything. I love it. We turned into real geeks with this stuff, so we got kind of in the weeds <laughs> with it. But, um, but those are legitimate. You have to read on the package and if in doubt, contact the company. If you look on Splice, they do have an agreement. You can read it online and it says you will own the composition. 
it doesn't say you will own your own recording. And that's where the problem is, as Vance said. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Very sneaky. Well, okay, let's let's everybody. move on from this one. Yes, because okay. it's a very hot button yes. topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Billy Anaruma, Billy Lee says, make your own loops. <laughs> yes. yes, that's right. Exactly. Your own darn music. Yes, that's you right. Know. Okay, let's go to the next song. song. Tell us, okay. show us another song, you guys. Okay, so actually we're going to do with more happy ones. This one was used in... Um, Saturday Night Live. So now this is a good example of a different song structure. The one we just played before was a typical verse, chorus, uh, verse, chorus. I knew that one actually has a bridge. This one has a chorus, but doesn't have a verse. Where there would be a verse, there's what we call a post-chorus with nonsense lyrics. The vocalises, yeah. And it's um, it was very simple. We did it with two other co-writers and it was super fun because there again, we didn't have to overwrite. So this has been used in several projects and uh, it gets used a lot in Europe for happy stuff. Um, and, and But this is the whole song. You can see it right here. Yeah, uh, that's chorus, it. post chorus, <laughs> instrumental chorus. I'm clearly chorus. working way yeah. too hard. <laughs> well, obviously we, we, we took it to heart when that uh, publisher told us, you're writing too much. Yeah. So I may say we're writing too little, but this one gets placed <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a beautiful way no matter where you go you've got a beautiful way and everybody knows yeah i was shining bright lighting up the day you've got a beautiful so you get get the idea there <laughs> i'm so happy i know that's, that's what i'm supposed goal. to do <laughs> Oh my God! Very simple, very simple. And you notice there was something that happened right after the chorus ended. You've got a beautiful way. Stop. There's like a little break there and that's called an edit point. And music editors love that. We think that's why it was chosen because it gives them choices. They could end it right there, done. And always, always put a hard ending on your song at the very end. Don't fade out. That's because they can always fade out. So, and what we do is false endings a lot, which means we go, uh, you've got a beautiful way, or do something a little different with a different chord. You've got a beautiful way, end on the tonic, something like that. It just gives them choices. And then they can fade it out if they don't like it, you know, at the end or whatever. But um, always have a hard ending. It's called a button ending. It just means bump. You're not doing da, you know, or, you know, you hear well, songs well, the fading can fade out. out. Yeah, they, the note can but fade out. But the beat out, stops, but, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get softer and softer and softer like they did in the 70s, if anyone remembers that type of music. <laughs> oh, I remember. Okay. <laughs> okay, give us another one, and then we'll move on to our oh, next okay. topic. So this is one that we did with a friend of ours, Juliet Lyons. Um, this was in an episode of The Young and the Restless. This is kind of an EDM-y type um, song. Now this one uh, it has a chorus, um, a short chorus, and it has a longer chorus. The verse is just repeating a simple line. So you'll, you'll notice that the, the song structures are different from your typical verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Um, but notice that it's not just a chorus repeating. There's a chorus, and then there's something different. In this case, repeating out of the town in the previous song, the ba 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 da ba. So there is still the variety. This is my night.
get the idea on that one. Mm -hmm. Again, there's not a lot of specificity here. We're not talking about what she's wearing, just that she's looking sharp and dressed to kill. Not, not, no detail. Yeah, not, mm -hmm. no specifics. Not my red sequin dress and my, you know, black stiletto heels <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's just a very <laughs> universal. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's great. All righty. Um, I want you have, does anybody have any questions before we move on to our next topic? How are we doing here? I'm going to put it in the chat. All righty. Okay, so let's just say in a world that, that we have just created, we finally got ourselves some really good sync songs <laughs> and we're ready to go. <laughs> now, where do we go? Yes. And so let us talk a little bit about uh, how do we get sync placements? I mean, uh, tell us about the perils of the humble su music supervisor mm -hmm. and uh, how sync agents and music libraries have helped you. Well, we all know that, well, most of us know, if you don't, well, then we'll, we'll tell you, music supervisors are the ones that ultimately are going to make the decision about which piece of music gets used. In some cases, there is not a music supervisor involved in the project. There might be a music editor who will make the, and the, that person is the person that uh, takes the piece of music, synchronizes it with the video, uh, edits what, whatever editing m might need to take place. Um, but ultimately, the music supervisor is involved in most cases. Now, it would seem to make the most sense. Well, let's just go after the music supervisor and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Music Supervisor, uh, what, uh, what, what, what are you working on? What kind of music do you need? That's a really good way to alienate that music supervisor. I don't know what it is, but they don't like being asked, what are they working on? Because a typical response is, you should know. You should do your research and find out. And a good way to do that is there's a website called IMDB. Internet Movie Database, imdb.com, where you can, if you can go to Grey's Anatomy, you can go to, and you can look up all these different shows and you can see who the music supervisor is. Um, so that, that, that's one way to approach it. However, um, when you approach them, un unless it's your cousin or your uncle, you're a stranger. And so you say to them, hey, I have a song that's the perfect fit for your show. Now they know that most of the time someone says that, it doesn't fit. Um, and even if it does, they don't know if you used splice loops. They don't know if you um, stole a, a sample from, you know, a, a Tom Petty song. They, no. they, don't yeah, know. they don't know. And, and if they license your song and there's a problem with it, where, where, where your song gets used in a TV show and a TV show is broadcast everywhere. And then someone says, that's my, my, my drum loop. That's my, my vocal, my vocal. And you didn't get permission from me. Yeah that music supervisor will likely never work again. And they'll probably get sued as well. Right, so <laughs> that's why they're very careful. Yeah, it's a really tough thing to do. And so about 10 years ago, these major production companies such as Disney and Universal got sick and tired of getting lawsuits because of things happening like this. So they entrusted the music supervisors to do what's called using vetted sources. And, and approved vendors. Those two terms are really important because they are the ones you need to get your music to. They are the middle people and they earn their money. They will take half of your money. Everything's usually, well, we'll just say most of the time it's split down the middle in reputable com companies. So, and we didn't wanna to talk too much about the business because there's so many different deals, but basically they get their publisher share you get your writer's share and if there's of, of the performance royalties uh, right and if there's a sync license like hey we want to use your song in Grey's anatomy here's five thousand dollars the product the uh, this intermediate intermediary company will take half and you get the other half you'll get 2500 each and if you have co-writers you split that 2500 with them and so on so hopefully that makes sense but these approved vendors are called production music libraries that's one. Um, sync agencies or music licensing companies, they go by different names. And indie music publishers, major music publishers, and record labels. They are all in the game to find sync. <laughs> so you have choices. You can present your music to a production music library or to a sync agency or to a publisher um, or a record label. And really every song can be a sync song. It's just, is it appropriate? So you're saying, well, where do I find these companies? They're actually very easy. They're hidden right in plain sight. 
You can Google, do an internet search and say- Okay, why don't we just do a internet search? Why don't you share your screen and just do an internet search? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Let's try it. Okay. So, so you're saying, well- You want I... me to share my screen? I'll share my screen and then- um, and then... Okay, why don't you do it? Yeah, That's that'd good. be great. Okay, I'll do it. Now, and let we'll me share you... my screen. We'll give you some clues. We okay, have, give me some clues. <laughs> okay, we happen to know a lot of production music libraries. We're in 60 of them and sync agencies and indie music publishers. So um, look up APM Music, Nancy. Try that okay. one. Okay. This is the largest in the world. And write that down. APM <laughs> Music Library. There it is. Whoa. Wow. So you just have to send your music to them, right? <laughs> Everybody just send your music to APM. I'm sure well, they will glad. They'll be, be so glad that we sent, you know, 60 will, people to it. them. Well, okay, some well, of them actually have a portal where you can submit music. Yes. Whereas others uh, are, are a little bit more coy about it. Yes. And, and standoffish, if we should say. But uh, just to let you know how difficult this is, it took us mm -hmm. about 10 years to get our music into APM. And we know the president of the company, and he's a good friend of ours. And it still took us several years. To, <laughs> this is how hard it is. But don't give up because there are some levels of these companies. And the APM is probably the top. It's certainly one of the biggest ones. It represents catalogs all over the world. We're in a couple of catalogs from Germany, one called Sonaton is one of their catalogs and they're huge. We get sports placements and all that. But if you Google search, do an internet search for production music library, okay. you'll come up with so many different opportunities and we'll we'll tell you right now which ones we're in because most of them will come up. Okay, okay here premium, we go. <laughs> premium Beat, we know them, um, they're great. They have ads Now I'd go back, oh, Universal Production Music. We are in that one because APM is part of that one. So that's a big one. And they have a portal where you can submit songs. Okay. And extreme music, that is a very raunchy one. <laughs> and we're very proud of that. They, um, if you see the titles, you're okay. in They're great. Um, extreme is, uh, they, they're part of, I think, I think Sony is. Sony, part of them. yes. Yeah. And uh, so Sony music is huge. They're major. So that's a great one. Um, good okay, job. why do you say they're, why are they, like, what are they? <laughs> that well, sound like they're edgy. They're, they're edgy. song titles and instrumental titles um, are, 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 salty. are not safe for work. Yeah, they're salty. <laughs> and they're very proud of that. Um, the so owner... if you have a lot of salty music, you should go. It yes, extreme. They, yeah, yeah. Seriously, they, they, it's they, an attitude. It's a yeah. brand. And seriously, they do things like they want really, let's just say, rough music and like rap and stuff that's not afraid to use the salty language. They have they have a need for that and they use it and they put it in, you know, like Netflix or HBO or the things that where you can do that. Uh, um, BMG production music. We're in that, we're, we're in that one. one. That's that's a that's very a good one. That's a great one. Now, those of you in Nashville, which I think is um, uh, several of you, mm -hmm. um, there is a major <clears throat> music library, yep. production music library in Nashville. Oh, wait, does on anyone music does anyone know? Who knows? This is a test. Who knows what the major production music library is on Music Row? We've been there in Nashville. No one knows. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a clue. It starts with W. Oh, um, whiz bang. No, well, um, they might be major, but okay, okay they're not. They're not whiz. They're not uh, a Warner. <laughs> Warner. Oh, yeah. ding, ding, ding. Warner production Nancy music. Got it. Warner production music. Um, hit them up. Okay, <laughs> hit them up. So I could go on their website yes. and. Some of them actually have a submission portal, um, or at least somebody that's in. When you look at, even if they don't, look at the the list of people that work there. They'll usually say about us, who we are, mm -hmm. and it'll list the people which you, the people you want to submit music to, or send an email to see if if you can get permission to submit music to them. Right. Are the production people? Yeah. Head of production, uh, assistant to the head of production. Those are the people. So write that down. I'm writing it down. Yeah. So write. <laughs> that's the biggest piece of the puzzle who to send it to now guess what they'll probably ignore you they'll ignore you for months they'll ignore you for years you have to keep on them and keep writing music and just reach out 
Now, say it's been a year. Oh my gosh, nothing is happening. This is terrible. Well, guess what? You have to network now. And a lot of us cannot stand that word. I know I wasn't a big fan of it starting out because I was, we were really shy. Networking means we're going to make some friends. That's all it means. We're going to make some common friends who love music as much as we do. That's all it is. It's not so scary now, right? And we're going to tell you some of the places you can go to network. Well, guess what? Nashville has some events for film and TV now. Do all you can to get there. Check out AIMP. Write that down. Association <laughs> of Independent Music Publishers. They have sync panels sometimes. We met Allison Schneider, who is head of NBC Universal in Nashville. She's based in LA. We just happened to be there for an NSAI event and she was on the panel and we went to the AIMP meeting and they have little drinks and things and refreshments and um, it's a great way to meet people. And, and it's not a matter of, hey, Allison Schneider, here's, here's my, my music. music. That's, that's not the way to play it. You need to just be nice to her and any uh, sync music professional and um, uh, just get to know them. Treat yeah. them like a person. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's just, hey, I'm a songwriter and I'd love to write for sync and I'm starting to find out. I read Tracy and Vance's book and I learned all about it. <laughs> but I learned all about it. You have to know the, the language they use. You have to know the procedures like getting your work for hire signed and demo studios that you need to sign off on. You need to know you can't use splice loops in your song. But they will be very impressed because not a lot of songwriters go to these events and they will fall all over you because they're publishers. They're in kind of a different world. They're not us you know and it's a great way to find new friends well i would like to say one thing about the aimp i love them they're one of the best organizations ever and it's 75 dollars a year to belong but if you don't have the money to if you know that's mostly for publishers and they do invite songwriters and artists to also join because every songwriter is really a publisher, you know, you know, you're an indie publisher, you publish yourself um, and that you don't have to belong to go to these events. A lot of times it's five dollars. It costs you five dollars to go. It's so most that most people can afford five dollars to go. And I would say yes, yes, yes to anything. I've been to the sync panels that they've had. And, you know, every sync, I mean, I, I wait. I wait for things to come that they do because it's all legit. Like it's yeah. the top publishers in Nashville belong to it. Well, and, and it's a great educational opportunity oh, because yeah. when it comes to talking with a publisher, talking with a production music library owner or representative or a sync agency. If you know nothing about how the sync business works, they're, they're not as interested in working with you. If you know how the, the more you know about the business, the more likely they are to even just talk to you because you can have a conversation about, hey, what, you know, that, that, that MFN deal that just went down over, over here or that ephemeral use that happened over there. Um, if you can have those types of conversations with them, they know that, oh, you're not just going to show up here oh once my. and try to germ me and then go, oh, shit. you're actually going to um, uh, stick around. That, they want to work with, they want to work with people. And it looks like because of the time difference, I got it wrong. The time I started, I think. Oh my goodness. Man. I have <laughs> muted Marcy. So <laughs> <laughs> so they want to work with people that, that they don't want to explain the business to everybody. Okay, now here's a secret that we'll give you. Every um, time we do one of these, and it's an intimate group, um, we'll give you some tips. Obviously, you found out about APM and Extreme and BMG and Warner Chapel right there in, your, in Nashville if you're, if you're there. Um, but I also want to mention that speaking of the AIMP, the Association of Independent Music Publishers, Terry Nelson Carpenter is... Uh, the president and she is based in Nashville and Los Angeles but she her company is in both places so check out real music works if you're an artist especially Terry gave us some quotes for our book she's a wonderful person and if you tell her you came to this and and uh, you are interested in knowing more and you're at the AIMP she will introduce you to people she is one of the nicest people we have ever met and, and yet she's very helpful. She's a sync music company owner. 
And she just loves songwriters. And it's Real Music Works, R-E-E-L. Okay. M-U-Z-I-K. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, W-E. RKS. Yes. Oh, and see, you're really I trying to make it hard, she, man. She's messing with you. <laughs> she's messing with us, like um, real, like a film reel. Now, AINP is established. They've been in Nashville for several years. Um, there's a new organization there. It's not new to us. We've been members uh, in uh, the Los Angeles chapter of the, the Society of Composers and Lyricists. They just opened up a chapter in Nashville a couple of months ago. It's getting up. It's getting off the ground. Um, the SCL, it's T H E S C L dot. Wait, well, hold on a second. T H E S C L. Society of Composers and Lyricists. So it's the S C L dot com. Um, <laughs> and they, they, they actually focus a lot on, on uh, composers who write score, but they're also diversifying. Uh, they're, they, they actually have talks and, uh, and panels about um licensed music which is what we do yeah okay that's that's amazing hold on a second the scl <laughs> dot org com com, com. Dot com. Mm -hmm. let me make sure the, what, was, what was terry's last name it's terry t-e-r-i nelson n-e-l-s-o-n and then carpenter like a carpenter c-a-r-p-e-n-t-e-r okay i just put the scl right there in the chat for everybody. I also put the AIMP.org in the chat for everyone. Thank you. Thank so you can go there. It's really important to network because it's it's about creating relationships, okay? And, and if some of you collaborate, you know what that's like trusting other people with your music. And it's a very incredible process and it takes a lot of trust. And we cannot emphasize this more in the sync music business, there has to be trust. If someone breaches that trust, it's not going to be pretty. So get to know your fellow composers and get to know these publishers, get to know the sync market in Nashville. It's very small, but I think it's starting to blossom because it is a great avenue. Now in our book, we call it, Hey, That's My Song, A Guide to Getting Music Placements in Film, TV, and Other Media. Now, the reason we called it music placements and not sync, sync is the buzzword right now, and that's wonderful. Sync is usually, it, what it is, is taking a piece of music that exists and matching it to a scene, like in a video or a movie or TV show or a commercial or a video game. You know, there are all these different things. However, there are some really untapped placements for music that go beyond that. And it's things like reading cards and praise music videos and videos on YouTube. Those are not handled by the same people. You don't need a music supervisor. We're in toys. We get, our music is in toys. We're in, if you just do this Google internet search for how to find sync music licensing companies, we're in a company called Audio Sparks. It was our very first placement company that we got into and we put in songs that we were just learning how to record and I I didn't know what to do so I would do nursery rhymes and Christmas songs just to get a feel for how to record I was so both of us we had to learn pro tools we knew nothing about recording but it was good practice and pretty soon we had all these songs that we had recorded just for fun we put them into audio sparks and they're in toys now. And they're, um, we had one on a jumbotron at a baseball game for Cincinnati Reds. I mean, it's crazy stuff that they put music into. A lot of wedding videos, um, private, you know, private wedding videos and, and greeting cards. The list goes on. We're in a talking skull. They use one of our songs. So you can get your music placed in so many things out there. And they're, they're out there. It's just finding those markets. There you go, Marmoset, they're up in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Music Bed, they, um, they have a different, Epidemic is one we don't recommend just because uh, it's different and we're, we are not on the record saying that, but just be careful because they do not like people to be members of PROs and we're not for that. We think- What? That, what? Yeah, no yes. way. <laughs> yeah. It's a different model. It's a different model. Most of these uh, uh, sync music licensing companies 
work on a model where if somebody wants to license a piece of music, they, um, they say, I want this piece of music. This is what I'm going to use it for. And the agency says, okay, that'll be a hundred bucks or whatever, the, the, maybe it's a thousand bucks, depending on what the use is. Um, and, and there's a fee and that's split with the writer. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are companies like Epidemic where their model is a subscription, where if someone says, okay, I'm going to pay 10 bucks a month and I'm going to use whatever uh, of your music that I want. And, that, and so it's difficult, if not impossible, to, to track down which pieces of music were used and how much money they earned. Um, and then another thing that Epidemic does, that's what they did, it's a subscription on the front end, on the back end where the royalties are, but they, they want to be able to tell their customers, oh, you don't have to worry about uh, paying uh, performance <laughs> royalties uh, to the writers because we're, you, you can use it uh, in, in places where they don't pay performance royalties. Um, yeah. and it, it, it can get really complicated, but yeah, that's one of the reasons that we're, uh, we can't say, yeah, just go down the list of, uh, on your Google search and any one of those is fine. They're, they're not. Some of them are great. Some of them have strings attached like, like that. Mm -hmm. And it, if you're not prolific, a lot of our friends who do this, like we do, and we have our own studio, we can basically, it used to take us three weeks to a month to write one song or one cue. And now we can do probably two a day comfortably, um, start to finish. One for sure a day. We've done that. We did a project for 48 hours TV show and we had to do 12 or 13 songs in just a couple of days. It was a crazy deadline. And we've written for Oprah where we had to have one day to do a song, done. You know, it, 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 it's really crazy. You can be very prolific or you can take your time. Now, if you take your time and you're slow, that's fine. And if it and if you're working on quality as opposed to quantity, it should be quality and quantity, ideally. But if you're if you're a little slow, we were at first, that's okay. But don't give your babies. If you're writing a hit song that you want Keith Urban to cut, do not put it in a sync licensing company at first. Pitch it to Keith Urban and pitch it to the high-end publishers. But if you're prolific and you just have fun doing this and you want to make some extra money, that's great too. It, it, there's a place for everybody in the sync world. But mm -hmm. I want people to write that hit song, it gets cut, and then it's used in the Applebee's commercial. <laughs> you know, that's, Speaking hypothetically. Yes, hypothetically, of course. Who would think? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be exactly. fancy like the Applebee's. Exactly. Applebee. exactly. Yeah, so okay. you, can, you can have your hit song that you're, you know, that, you can do that, both that's is what geared I'm saying. toward that because mm -hmm. um, that's uh, going to have detail. It's, it's going to have a, you know, the, the, uh, a more contemporary song structure. And then aside from that, you can say uh, uh, on, on other days, you're going to work on songs for sync, which don't even mm -hmm. have to have verses in some cases. Yeah. Yes, and, I and love that. <laughs> don't have to choose. It's you can do it all. all. <laughs> oh okay, so I want to I want to ask a few questions from people. Let's consider this the lightning round. Okay. 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 And then then we'll get to our last thing, which is you know coming up. But Kevin wants to know: do you, Can you put your songs on Spotify and sync at the same time and get paid through both? It depends. <laughs> well, you can. Um, you can. Th there are some, depending on the deal that you have with the Sync Agency Production Music Library, in some cases, they do that. They will put your music on Spotify. Our music is on Spotify. We never put it there. A lot of the companies we've signed our music with put it there because it's, it's, it's an opportunity to make some money. Um, so there are some libraries, some production music libraries, maybe some Sync companies, uh, that won't want you to do that, but others are okay with it. So you really have to have an idea of what kind of deal you're going to sign before you do that. Uh, that's good. Okay, so just check with whoever, you know, when you get an opportunity for a sync license, make sure that you know if that's important to you to get your songs on Spotify or keep your songs on Spotify, make sure that they know and, and make sure you, you ask them. Okay, Anna wants to know, how do you ensure your songs don't just collect dust at a sync agency? Uh, and no guarantees. No guarantees. Okay, no guarantees. okay uh -huh. actually, Anna, and we are going to talk about this next. So we're going to get to your second part of your question. Uh, is it better to go for smaller agencies or, or more attention, you know, yeah, That's where a great question, because if you do horror music, you love writing horror music and yet you pitch it to a boutique library or sync agency that does happy, fun commercial music, 
you won't get any placements most likely mm -hmm. but now production music libraries just so you know those are mostly for composers so mm -hmm. if you're a composer there are songs there that there are songs there um, and then sync licensing agencies and what we call music licensing agencies and music licensing companies, they go by different names. They are more for artists. Okay. So if you're an artist, now you don't have to be 20 years old and be an artist. You can be 80 and be an artist. We do know some, believe it or not, who are 70 and above and they're artists and they're doing this. Um, but they want kind of a unique sound and something kind of different and vibey. And then there are indie publishers, and I'm sure most of you are aware of them. So there are all these different levels, and you just have to decide where do you fit in. Are you more a composer and you want to write songs like we do, the very simple? Or do you want to write more artsy songs for a sync licensing agency? Or do you want to write potentially hit songs and, and pitch them to major publishers? Here's a nice thing about the smaller companies. They are more likely to send you briefs. Large companies don't tend to do that. Again, this is not 100% of the time in either case, but we've gotten briefs from the smaller companies who don't have what they need. And so they will go to their writers that are already with them, that they already have a working relationship with and say, like that was the 48 hours thing that Tracy was talking about. This company we've been working with for over 10 years said, we need some very sparse piano cues that sound like this. They give you samples. You, 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 you don't rip them off. You kind of get the, the vibe. Uh, you know, the, 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 the feel of, of what those cues sound like, create your own, um, and then you submit those and they end up in the TV show. Yeah, those are called, um, those are those briefs that Nancy was talking about in the beginning, and they're also called asks, A-S-K-S, -S. in the commercial world, they call them asks, they're asking for a certain type of song, mm -hmm. so just so you know. All right, awesome. Do you think sending our, our music through disco uh, AC that, you know, the increases the chances of music libraries will listen to it. No, <laughs> not really. It does. It depends. There again, everything is, is gray. <laughs> Disco has its advantages. I mean, it's, I know music supervisors like it. Yeah. Um, and uh, production music libraries, sync agencies uh, it, like it from the standpoint of you're presenting your music to them and it allows you to see it, to, to tell if they've listened to your song. Um, or not. I mean, it gives you a lot of control. Uh, it's nice from your standpoint, but from their standpoint, it's just, I, I know that they prefer it to sending them a, an MP3 attached to an email. Never do that unless they give you permission. Yeah. But you can, if you send them a link, it doesn't fill up their inbox and they can click on it. Ideally, you send them a link that they can listen to it without downloading it. And if they want to download it, it's an option. Now, are you talking about disco as a way to represent your music or to pitch to a music a music supervisor? Because there is a difference. If you're just throwing your music up on disco, which mm. is a platform, a lot of people think, oh, they'll find my music and discover it. And uh, it yeah. almost never happens. I've never actually. Not like that. No, you have to put your music up there and then use the link and send it to music exactly. supervisors and, and they it, can download it. And it's awesome. Okay, on to the next one. Kevin wants to know, did you ever hear of Sonata Media? S-O-N-A-T-A -A Media. No, there no. are literally thousands of companies <laughs> yeah. out there now. So no. But do your research. And the way to do that is just go online and see if they have any placements. And mm -hmm. it does it sound like the kind of music you write? Um, Carrie, yes, I have heard of Crucial Music. I have a song in Crucial Music, and you do too, right? Okay, it's been in there for a long time, and they never used it yet. <laughs> you can actually go on there to see what they've pitched for. Um, we have one song that they have that's a ukulele song, and it gets used by another library because they're non-exclusive, which means you can put your music in different libraries that are non-exclusive. Um, you, it doesn't mean you have to write for a certain library if you're exclusive. There are two kinds of libraries, basically. Exclusive means your song is in that library, that's it. And then there's non-exclusive, which means your song is in Crucial, but you can also put it in other non-exclusive libraries. Um, we have a song that's in a couple of libraries. It's used all the time with one library, and it's never been used with Crucial. And they've pitched it for all different kinds of things. Who knows? You know, just luckily. You know, 
And this is the perfect time to segue into our last little section here, which is help a music library wants my song and my publishing. What should I do? <laughs> Let's talk about exclusive versus non-exclusive and what you like about each one of those and which one you like best. Well, there was an earlier question about um, signing music with a, a company and it just sits there. Um, so that's why you want to be careful about um, who you sign with. Uh, I think early on, certainly we did, and I'm sure others have as well, um, after rejection, after rejection, the first company that says, yeah, I, th I think I want to sign your music. We just go, oh, cool. Um, here, here, here it is. What do I got to sign? Um, okay. uh, be a little bit more discerning is what we would recommend. Um, because the ideal is to find the right fit for your music. And, and as Tracy mentioned earlier, it's a matter of signing music of a, your music of a certain style and genre to a company that specializes in that genre. They've gotten, they have a track record of getting placements in that genre. If you write songs like a couple of ones we, we played for you earlier, one of the ones we played would be great for a commercial, that second one that we played. If we signed it with a, with a, 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 a movie trailer company, it probably wouldn't get placed because they usually want darker stuff. But if we signed it with a company that specializes in commercials, well then we've just increased our odds again. So it's finding the right fit. And unfortunately, um, like I mentioned earlier, there's no guarantee. You, you can do that homework and do that research and sign your music and it just sits there. Um, the best thing you can do to combat that is do not sign your entire catalog to one company. No, never Our strategy do that. is a, a handful, three, four, five, give them a year or two, see how they do. If they get no placements, I wouldn't sign anything more with them. You might sign three, four, five with a company and they just get placements uh, on top of each other, sign more stuff with them. But, and it's not a matter of, oh, my friend got a lot of placements with this company. It might not, a good fit for them might not be a good fit for you. Well, and also some companies have reversion clauses. A lot of the licensing companies do because they're artist friendly. They want the artists to have their songs and control them to some degree. Production music libraries, no. Most of them, not all, but almost, almost all of them, take your copyright, they split 50 50 and you will never get your song back so mm -hmm. think about that before you sign music to each company know the terms of your deal and, and, your and to start off with i think the non-exclusive ones where there's a reversion where after two or three years you can renew it or you can take it back that's a good place to start yeah. now you might wonder well why don't i just always sign non-exclusive because when it's exclusive they can market it a lot more strongly that's around the world yes. um there are some I, um, let's just say strings attached for the non-exclusive libraries because a lot of times they don't know who the publisher is if it's not labeled correctly. Crucial is good because they put a little, um, okay, you'll hear retitling. That's another whole ball wax. Oh my uh, God. Yeah, don't even want to go down there. But it basically, they call it retitling. Um, for Crucial, retitling for them is taking your title and putting a CM for Crucial Music so that it's ID'd and it can be used in major projects like film, feature films that go around the world and things like that. So it gets very complicated. That's why we wrote a book about this because so many times people were so confused about all these terminology, these phrases and attachments and deals. It's complicated, but it, it's not that bad once you understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, I'm going to make sure everybody has a link to uh, your book before we end here okay. tonight. Okay, we go. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It makes me want to read your book so much. Just <laughs> cuddle up in, at night before I go to turn the light out. It's huge. It's a big book. Guys, is there such a thing as a reversion clause for an exclusive deal? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. And what's the normal reversion? Three to five years, sometimes more, but that's typically um, the deal. Three to five years. Uh, we have one. Uh, it's a sync music. Okay, I'll give you. You can tell you what it is. It's Harry Warren music, and uh, it's run by his granddaughter. Harry Warren um, was one of the, I think, founders of ASCAP, but certainly one of the first presidents back in the twenties. And he wrote things like Beyonce's "At Last" that she recorded. And um, I only have eyes for you. That's in a commercial right now. For you know, he he was incredible. He wrote a lot of hits that you'll recognize. But we're in the Red Queen music. It's his granddaughter's. Um, she runs the catalog now, and it's exclusive. But if we want to pull our songs out, they're artist songs for our artists. We can we give them uh, sixty days notice. 
That's yeah. the shortest. And we get all the publishing. They just split licensing fees. So there again, it's another opportunity and they're very open to hearing artist songs. So that's a clue, right? That's there. really so cool. You're, get, you're getting all your publishing back as well. Yes, they don't take any publishing. That's such a rare deal. And it's so do, rare. Yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. But and they get okay. Harry Warren music. Okay. Harry Warren Entertainment and Red Queen music. Check okay. that out. Okay. Okay. So this is my my last question that we had decided we were going to talk about. Okay. Tell us about the good deals you've had with people and the bad deals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> dish. We got to dish the dirt now. Yeah, we got to dish out some dirt for well, sure. Well, there was one company and they will be nameless because they're no longer around, but they um, it was run by a woman who approached us out of the blue. We were starting out. We didn't know much about the business. And she took, I think, eight songs that we had. Um, and then a friend of ours, coincidentally, in Los Angeles, uh, also got approached by this woman and we just happened to be talking about something and he brought it up. He gave her 300 songs. And we said, oh, don't do that. Why are you doing that? And he said, well, I wrote all these songs and she promised me the moon. And we said, we don't know this company. We just gave her eight. And, and he said, well, I have a good feeling about it. Well, she basically skipped town. So he's still to this day, 10 years later, trying to get his songs back, 300 songs. So mm. that was the worst. But, but the, that wasn't a deal we signed, fortunately. Right. That was our first. Right, and there was no reversion on it, I'm sure. So exactly. the copyright. Like... No, that, we did uh, find out that she sold this catalog and some people do that. They're building an asset and they take our precious songs, all of us collectively, and they build an asset and then they turn around and sell it. That's what she did. And she sold it to a major company, probably made a million dollars or more, who knows? I'm sure our, our friend wasn't happy. It did get put into a major library. Those songs, I think they make some music for us, or money for us, I don't know, but it was the worst deal we've ever signed and we've been very careful ever since. There's one company that we were in touch with and we signed, fortunately, I think we only, just only signed an instrumental, one instrumental early on and never got us any placements. We never heard anything from him. And then we, years later, probably at least 10 years later, we see this guy at, at it was at a, at a publisher meeting. And we said, oh, hey, you know, you signed our song. What's, what's going on? How's the company doing? Oh, I closed that company years ago. Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. We could have been pitching that song. We could have been pitching that instrumental. He just closed shop. Never told anyone. And, and, and to me, that, 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 that's a message for be careful of those smaller companies. I mean, there's a nice, you know, there's the Goldilocks thing. Maybe a company's too big. For us, this guy's company was too small. He wasn't even professional enough to let us know he closed it. Maybe the middle ones might be a little bit, have a bit more stability, maybe. Yeah, now on the other hand, you're gonna get a lot of rejection. You will not hear from people. And it takes a long time. They are inundated with people all over the world. So like we said, follow up. But there was one company that he actually gave us a list of some songs he wanted us to write for him. We did. He took most of them except for two or three songs that we really worked hard on. He said, nah, it just wasn't what I was looking for. It was kind of a bombastic rock, epic rock kind of cue. And so we were kind of disheartened because, you know, you, you like to think everything you write is great, but not always. Or it just doesn't, it didn't fit with what he thought he could place. So unfortunately, he could have just signed it. Yeah. But he said, you know, guys, I don't think I can place this for you. Why don't you go ahead and sign it someplace else? Which, by the way, even before we submitted it to him, that was our attempt at um, at trailer music. And we don't do trailer music. We yeah. found out what we do well, what we don't do well. Trailer music, we don't do well. So it failed at being trailer music. We submitted it to this other company that Tracy mentioned, and he didn't think he could place it. So he said, well, I'm going to let you guys have it so you can pitch it someplace else. Which we did. And then this other company ran with it, and they got it into a show called Forged and Fire. And they used it almost like a theme song. Every time the contestants would come out and be announced, the, the, sh the, the music ran, and the show ran for five seasons using every single episode. And we made a lot of money on that. And we also had a song that we wrote um, on spec, which means um, on speculation. That means they're not going to, they're only going to take it if they think they can use it. So a, a specific company asked us to write a song for a Home Depot commercial. And we were so excited about it. It was between ours and another song, and they took the other song. So we were really disappointed. 
but we ended up put, giving it to another publisher and they put it in a major commercial for Christmas and LL Bean LL Bean commercial and it made a ton of money so you never know we also have a friend who wrote a song that got totally rejected um, and he was he was really depressed because he was down to his last dollar and the publisher was going to pay a thousand dollars for this song and he worked so hard on it he got a live trumpet player to play on it and they said no nope, it doesn't quite work and I think that trumpet is fake and he goes no it was real and he was really mad <laughs> so he gave it to another publisher and months went by maybe a year I don't know the timeline but the the publisher called him up one day and said hey hey I, I have someone really wants to use this cue they said it's perfect but they want to change the title and he goes oh I don't care whatever they want to call it so they called it let's make a trade and that song gets used every single day on let's make a deal and he pulls in enough to basically pay for like eight houses every year <laughs> <laughs> not houses but the, you know the mortgage yeah. for eight houses i'm not even kidding you so you never know yeah that's amazing yeah great you know like we are kind of out of time here so i want to say in the chat um, if you want to be mentored by Tracy and Vance, we, they are taking, you can book them. It is not free. Um, and, but it will be worth your time. I've also put in, um, a link to their book. Hey, that's my song. And I swear to God, I am going to be reading and enjoying and really going through this with a fine tooth comb because, um, you know, I, I just love the things you guys said tonight. And so does anybody have a question or two? Can, do, can you stick around Tracy and Vance a few more minutes to sure, answer some absolutely. questions? It's a very okay. complicated topic. So, and I know it's new for a lot of you. It was a whole new world for us. And frankly, when you're a songwriter trying to pitch to these major artists, it's kind of like trying out for a movie and you want to be the lead actress. You want to be Brad Pitt. Well, we're the character actors. We can do anything we want. And some people don't even know that we did Trap um, and <laughs> Epic Rock that just came out at APM. Um, it's a new little collection we did that took us about three years to do, almost four. It took a long time, but it's already getting used in sports and things like that. So it's fun to write happy stuff and then really sad, serious stuff for 48 hours and then kind of, you know, interesting different genres and hybrids try anything you never know what's going to be used in sync how are they, do we have any questions there somebody want to just unmute yourself and ask yeah i have a question this is uh kevin mayfield Hi, um kevin. how you doing so thank you guys for information it's really good i've been my i'm committed to try to get a sync placement this year so i'm really committed trying to figure that out so I've heard that it's good that some sync libraries start to know who you are after you do the same thing. Like if you're a hip hop producer or whatever, and if you get really good at that, people just start searching you out because you're known for that. So do you, so it sounds like you're saying just do, it's better to do different things and just have a catalog or is Well, it one of the advantages to, be, to being able to sign with different companies is that there are some companies that know us as we're the happy music people. There's another company that knows us as the sports rock people. And this other company comes to us when they need Caribbean cues. So we have a different reputation with, with each one. Each one of them doesn't really like the idea that any of us can do more than one thing well, because there are a lot of producers, a lot of writers that will say, you should sign me because I can do everything well. Yeah, never and, say and, that. Never, and right away, ever. they know that that's not true. <laughs> but that, and that is true. As I mentioned, we don't do everything well. We do, we're not really that good at trailer music oh, at all. Oh, we're horrible. Yeah, but horrible. But what we do, even though we don't do everything well, most of us do more than one thing well. Yeah. And we have to sometimes search to find what that is. If you're the hip hop guy, then with with with, with this um, uh, company, then be that. If you want to be the the heavy metal guy with this other company, then do that. They and, and usually what happens is they they're interested in you for that one thing, and 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 they'll sometimes they'll start saying, well, what else do you do? And then you can then they'll allow you to do a different genre for them. Yeah. What kind of music do you do? You do different things besides hip hop? Yeah, I do hip hop, uh, pop. I do a lot of experimental stuff. Um, like I like what you like some of your lyrics because like I've realized I do a lot of stuff for artists, but then a lot of my stuff is more so like Chanty stuff, like a Black Eyed Peas type stuff, where it just oh, feels cool. oh, perfect. That's right. huge right now. Yeah. 
yeah you'll always get placements with that kind of thing is more kind of on the positive side or just lighter you know it's not real serious and that's really great in commercials they oh you know nancy asked us earlier what kinds of things are music soups looking for they always want happy that's the number one thing searched for right now but hip hop is the genre that's probably used the most, but rock is used a lot. You don't hear rock on radio right now so much, if ever, and, and people love it, but it's great in sports and car shows and reality shows. You hear a lot of hip hop and rock. So if you guys do that, that's key. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. Thanks, Kevin, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah, thanks, Kevin, appreciate it. Hey, anybody else got a question? So where, where can you guys be reached as far as your mentoring program and how do you work that? Okay, so um, I put a link in the um, in the chat and you can go to the, the front front page of Discover Sooner and you just go down until you see Tracy and Vance and as a mentor and and uh, you can it's um, it's right sort of there. The link is it sort of in the middle, or let's see where it's at. All righty, it's in the chat here somewhere. All righty, I want to take you to that page then. And so, um, hold on a second here. Uh -oh. Or just go through Nancy. Is that okay, Nancy? Yeah, that's I had set I had set it up so that you can just go out there. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Well, it looks like that link is just a general link to the website. Is that yeah, what that's what I thought it looked like when mm -hmm. I saw it, but now I can't find it. No, right here, right here on my front on Discover Sooner's homepage. Oh, oh it is on the homepage. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, the homepage, and then just come down here, and see our we have our unic uh, our sync challenge okay. there, and then I so I put up all of our sync mentors right here, and so you can just. Oh, um, you guys work with Nancy. Yes. Uh, well, I do work with Nancy, you know, she is the sweetest, fabulous. Yeah. I've known Nancy for many years. Um, yeah. And also, um, Sharon Clark does, um, sync and uh -huh. she's a song plugger in country right. and sync, but we have a Tracy and Vance. And so if you want to book an hour with them, you can just go there and, uh, it'll pop up and, uh, pick a date and we will make this happen for you. Okay, it sounds great. And then also, um, I put in a link in the chat for you to go to their book. Hey, that's my song. And ooh, well, let me let me do that while I'm here. <laughs> yeah, we really still do that too. We just did it the other day. We heard a song come up, and I said, "Hey, that's our song." Well, we say our song, but <laughs> hey, that's my song. And that's here we go. Hey, that's my song. There's so there's a link in 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 there, and you can go up here and buy this book and it's amazing book right there. Um, so you've got two links uh, to that right there in the chat. And also everybody who's attended tonight is going to get an email later on tonight or tomorrow morning with the links to both of these things too. So you should be good to go. And Hey, this was super helpful. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really fun thing. I think for us, it was just so fulfilling to do this in addition to writing the big hit songs. You know, it's just it just was more obtainable, attainable. So I would highly recommend at least trying it out, investigating it, and try and go to that AIMP meeting. Say hi to Terry. Introduce yourself. Say you, you went on a thing with us, and, and uh, she's in our book, too. She has some quotes. She's a brilliant, brilliant, helpful person. We can't say enough. So, um, And Nancy, have you been to, you've been to AIMP meetings, you said, a time or two? Oh, many times, yeah. Have, have you met Terry? Did you get to I never her? met Terry, so now I'm going to have to look her up. Yeah, so <laughs> Because it's been COVID, you know, of course, it's been online. But yeah. Definitely say hi to her and introduce yourself. I think well, part of it's just have, being a nice person. A lot of these high-level publishers and sync people, they're really nice people once you get to know them. We were surprised. You'd, you'd think they'd be, you know, out to get you, you know. <laughs> but they're, they're not. They love songwriters, uh, they, especially from Nashville and, and uh, people who are really learning the craft. They get a big charge out of that they just love that and support that that's really neat also don't forget our sync challenge coming up and uh, just put this coupon 
again, you could just copy it because it's not going to anybody else except for the people who came to this thing. So consider uh, jumping into our sync challenge. And uh, if it feels like the right thing to you, copy that coupon. So when you apply, it only costs you $10. Does that sound good? Hey, we'll, anyone will take that. That's a good deal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, it has been an absolute pleasure. Every moment of my time, I felt informed since the minute I have met you two. I, you know, I've worked very hard to try to get sync placements and it is not that easy, but uh, you made me feel like it's obtain attainable mm -hmm. and, you know, like, like just audio sparks, right? Uh, keeping up on people and following up and following up and following up. This is the name of any game. If you are in the music business, you have to just put on an iron, you know, put on your tin man heart. <laughs> don't, don't let it get to you. Just ask again and, you know, keep after these production music libraries as you try to, to go get them. And when you meet people like Nancy Peacock and Sharon and Tracy and Vance, I would like to say I met Tracy and Vance over at the Durango songwriter expo. And I went to the one in, um, um, in California, in uh, uh, Ventura, California mm -hmm. in February. And if you're interested in meeting music supervisors and people like Tracy and Vance, Next year in February, Durango Songwriter Festival will please turn on, mute yourself, <laughs> please, right. people. Uh, so please consider going to the Durango because you're going to meet a ton of people. And that is what I put under the networking, uh, you know, uh, tick mark. I try to do as many things as I can because that is just the, the way you meet people when they know that you're for real and that you're not goofy. <laughs> Well, yeah, Durango has another event in Colorado uh, in the fall, September, October. They have yeah, another it's a little closer. And yes. they have a, a music supervisor one in May. They just had it a month ago. That's a pricey one, though. Very expensive. And it's really, if you're really serious, that, that I mean, they only take 30 people, and it's super popular. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know about the one in May. Yeah. So this one, at least last in February, was 320 bucks. Plus, then you got to get yourself out there and you pay for the hotel. But honestly, you can meet some of the best songwriters in the world. I mean, if I was going to do something else, I would, I would have something like that here in Nashville, but I got oh, enough going. Someday. <laughs> someday, honestly, just bring a Durango thing over here to Nashville because it, great. it was fantastic. Uh, it was really fun. So yeah, we like the small conferences because you do get to meet people. The big ones are great too. We, we love them all. We've tried almost all of the conferences and Frankly, Durango is one of our favorites. It's just yeah. really I mean, it's about you get listening sessions so you can get your music in front of, uh, you know, music supervisors and sync agents. Yeah. And that's why I like it. And then all these uh, Nashville publishers come out there, too. So, yeah, they have both, which is great. Two for yeah. one. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time to do this. It was great meeting you. And really, don't Thank give you. up. It's a super fun avenue. And it's just great to see your songs going somewhere eventually. And it does take time. But I think you'll 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 find it. We did. It's not impossible. <laughs> I love that. That is some real words of wisdom, you too. <laughs> um, Vance, do you want to leave us with some of your words of wisdom before we get out of here tonight? Well, we, we wrote the book because, as, as you mentioned earlier, it took us five years to get our first placement. We want yours to come a lot faster than a that. A lot faster. That's why we wrote the book. Yeah. And just did, like Nancy said, Get that thick skin and the, the Tin Man heart put on and, and, and uh, get your coat of armor on. But just also just have fun. When, when we've had fun, the most fun, we didn't have any expectations. When we've had high expectations, they got crushed. And we had low expectations, something really amazing happened. So just be open and always positive. It's hard to do, but that's why we have communities such as Nancy's to just kind of help us all figure it out and kind of cheer each other on too. It's even really the, important. Even the most successful of us still 
get rejections. Yeah. I, I, and you may hear that from other songwriters, and it's true. But as we've told, some of the stories that we, we mentioned earlier, uh, some of those rejections turned into pretty big successes. Yeah. So keep Because it. If, if you're not having success and you're, and you're not getting rejected, then you're not trying. You have to be. I mean, I know that there. I I can't remember who it was. I know there's somebody who actually celebrates the rejections because that's it's evidence that they're actually trying. Yeah. Way to look at it. I always feel like you know, like, I mean, I've been a song plugger here in Nashville to the country you know, genre for a long, long time, all these major labels trying to get in, you know, and I was like, if I got someone to answer me and say no, a pass, I was like, yes, yeah. really <laughs> I did my job. I got the <laughs> song there. Yay. And because it is not easy to get to build these relationships. And now even if, you know, you meet people out and they even give you your, your email and then, then they never listen, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, other people do. And you just, yeah. You know, try every doorknob until something opens up for you. Or and... kick it open, you know, eventually. <laughs> but the, the one thing we found really helped, and, and this is just a silly little thing, but it really did help us keep our sanity. Every, we picked, usually it was Friday, every Friday, but now we changed it to Wednesday since the pandemic. But every Wednesday now, we celebrate even the smallest success. If if we, were, we got a, a yes or a brief or something, it, it's wonderful. So just remember that. And I write it down and keep a list. And after the end of the year, I go, wow, there were actually some really great things that happened. Sometimes it feels like you just hear no, but celebrate every success, every I, little thing. I love that. Who's going to start once a week on Wednesdays, like have martini <laughs> night or something, and then you're going to write something good down. Yep. I love that. Every, yeah. you know, every, every week. At the lowest of the low, at least something happened. Like, well, you know, we got a new plug in you know, or something. But it just it was just uh, it really helped keep our spirits up. Oh, my God. I love you, people. OK, <laughs> so we'll have you back. We'll do something oh, else it. together. And I will see you and everyone. Let's just it's late. It's 629. Let's get out of here. Oh, and go Thank enjoy you guys so much. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Nice Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for okay. having us. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, you're welcome. Bye now. Yay. Oh, that is so funny. Goodbye, people. <laughs> Bye-bye.